Let's imagine that I have a small yellow square. Look, there it is. In fact, I don't think it's very square. It's a little more oblong. But I want to know more about that square. I want to look at it in, at, as a bigger scale. What I can, of course, do is magnify is magnify that square. And once I've magnified it, it might end up looking something like that. Okay, so we might be able to measure its angles, we might be able to measure the area of it and so on. So we can do lots more with it, we might be able to see what it contains and so on. But the point we really want to make is that we could also be interested in to what degree has that object been magnified. And if we find out, for example, I don't know, if we found out that that was, let, let's say, just for argument's sake, that was 1,000 times bigger, just for argument's sake, I'm not sure it is, we would discover that there were 1,000, there, or there was space for 1,000 of those little squares into our big rectangle over here, okay? So bear that in mind, that's what we're talking about when we talk about magnification. You know, how much, can, uh, uh, to what degree has something been kind of blown up so we can see it as a larger scale? Now with that in mind, I want, you to, I want to introduce you to a super, 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 super important equation. Now, you will be provided this equation in the exam, but I really do think it's something you want to get familiar with. And it's a classic example of a biological skill that we would be asked to calculate this. Magnification, which, by the way, we will now on refer to as M. Magnification equals, equals image size, how big we've blown the thing up to divided by divided by the actual size now if you think about that kind of logically and intuitively hopefully it makes sense if we want to know how many times we've kind of blown it up by if we divide the big object by the smaller object we find out how many times the smaller object kind of fits into it in other words we find out the magnification so hopefully that makes sense now I did mean to put an I for image size, and I did mean to put an A for actual size, because now we've got that, we can use a nifty little trick, which I'm sure is not completely unfamiliar with you, unfamiliar to you, having you guys having studied science and maths for quite a bit of time at school. We can use what's called an equation triangle, which means that we can now calculate any aspect of that equation. And it works like this. I am. I am. So what we've done there, just to be clear, is we've got image size, actual size, and magnification. So as we've seen in our equation, if we want to calculate magnification, we take image size. That is over above actual size. We We divide image size by actual size and we get magnification. If we want to know the image size, we take the actual size and multiply it by m the magnification. If we want to find out the actual size, we take the image size and divide it by magnification. This continues to work for us really, really neatly. Now, I also want you guys to realize that we must always, always, always work with consistent units. Now, it's very likely that the units you guys are going to work with, let me just choose a minty green, you're very likely to either work with millimeters. So let me remind you that one millimeters a one millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometers because these values are likely, or these units, sorry, are likely to be the units that you are going to be calculating with either millimeters or micrometers. Now, you might also just want to remind yourself that one micrometer is equal to 1000 nanometers nanometers. Now, I don't think you're going to be calculating with nanometers very frequently, so I'll leave that for another day. Um, today, we're going to be working broadly with millimeters and micrometers. And by way of a summary of all of that's been said so far, I want to introduce you to a nifty way of remembering this whole concept. And it's like this. I am, I am, I am unbelievable I am unbelievable at biology. Now, what does that mean? Well, and by the way, I'm talking about you, not me. I'm pretty average, really. But what it means here is that we remember our equation triangle and the fact that we must make our units consistent through our I am 
and the un of unbelievable. So try and remember this if you can. It will give you a great deal of assistance in the processes we're now going to look at. Problem one, pretty simple, let's hope. A student does a microscope drawing much as you guys will have done. In this case of a cross section of a leaf with an actual size of 0.1 millimeters. So we're working in millimeters here. In their drawing, they use a magnification factor of times 500. So we've already got two thirds of the variables we need in our equation. So therefore we can go on to calculate the actual image height. So in other words, you know, what is this? What is, let me just do a dark color. What is this height here? Okay, so we can go on to calculate that, which I've drawn rather uglyly. Okay, so we can calculate that height. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, I really encourage you in every occasion that you do this to start with step one. And all I want you to do in step one is to simply remind yourself of our equation triangle. It's going to be I am, you put your little multiplication there if you need to. And don't forget to remind yourself that you must use the units. Remember, I am unbelievable, units believable. And in this case, it's going to be in millimeters. So there's step one, we've reminded ourselves of our process. Step two, we want to ask the question, what do we need to find? So again, let's just put our equation triangle in. We know it's in millimeters, so we'd have that there in advance. Let's just go to see what do we need to find. Well, what, one way of looking at that is what do we actually have already? Well, we've got the actual size, we've got the magnification, what we don't have is the size of the image. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now, we can put some numbers into that. So let's put our numbers in, stage three. So this time, let's put our numbers in again and remind ourselves we must have consistent units. Let's put some numbers in. What have we got here? Well, we've got an actual size of point of point 0.1 millimeters, that is. And we've got a magnification, of course, of 500. But we don't have our image size. So finally, how are we going to do this? Stage four, we're going to calculate. We're literally going to say, let's just clear that. We're literally going to say, right, 0.1 multiplied by 500 equals 50. So what we have here is we have an image size of 50, must keep my units consistent, millimeters. Problem two, calculate the magnification, that's what we're looking for, used to produce the image of the red blood cell. So let's go straight in to our stage one. We know that in stage one, we are gonna draw our equation triangle because it is very helpful to us. And we are gonna remind ourselves of the I am, and we got to look at our units as well, which in this case, we already see, because we've got some micrometers in our question here, the actual size. We already know that our units are going to be in micrometers, okay? So we've established there the equation triangle and we've identified the units. Good. Let's move on to stage two, as always, which is going to be what do we need to calculate? So what do we need to calculate? So that's kind of the way we can do that is sort of look what's missing. But it's, it's actually asking isn't the question, right? Calculate the magnification. But what we can do here is we can say, right, well, we've got the actual size, that's there, it's provided for us within the question. Have we got the image size? And the answer to that is yes. And how can we answer that, that question as yes? Well, because we've got a, um, we've got a um, scale bar here. So we can actually, therefore, literally measure the size of this magnified image. What we don't have is the magnification. So stage three. We can now introduce some numbers, so let's do that. So let me put my triangle in again. I guess you guys get really bored of me doing these triangles, right? So what we've got here is we've got the actual size, which is seven micrometers. Now we've got to get the image size. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to open up our ruler. We're going to move our ruler into position. And we are literally going to measure this distance. So here, there's my ruler in place. Let me choose a nice strong color. So we're going from here, we've got 10, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28 millimeters. Now, of course, I must always remember to have consistent units. And if we remember what we said before, our units here need to be micrometers. 
Okay, so our units need to be micrometers. So of course, I've got to convert my 20, my 28 millimeters into micrometers, which of course is multiplying by 1,000, 28,000 micrometers. So I can now put that number into here. I've got 28, one, two, three thousand, and we're looking to calculate the magnification. So to complete that, we, number four, let's actually calculate what have we got here? 28,000, one, two, three, divided by seven, gives us a magnification factor of times 4,000, times 4,000. We have magnified this red blood cell 4,000 times to make it the scale that it is within this question. And problem three, using the length xy, which of course is this value here, Calculate the actual length of the mitochondrion in micrometers. Let me just make sure that is officially micrometers in micrometers. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find out how many times or, or have, having had this blown at 25,000 times bigger, what would its actual size be in sort of the real world? Okay, so let's see if we can do that. We follow our stages as ever. What do we do first? We always draw our equation triangle and we remind ourselves of I am and we must use our units which we know already are micrometers because we've got it here in the question. Stage two, as always, we ask the question what do we want to find out? So again, equation triangle. What do we have and what do we not have? Well, in this scenario here, we of course have the magnification because it's down here in the question we have the image size because we can measure xy so that's good what we don't have is we don't have the actual size of the object stage three as ever is what do we know what do we know so let's put some numbers into this at this stage so let's put some numbers into this we know the magnification is times 25,000, so that we can put that in straight away. We know that we're looking for the actual um, size of this mitochondrion. And as we said already, we know the image size, why, or we can know it at least, because we can bring our, whoops, I must select the right, I must select the, the right layer, of course. Um, we can bring our ruler up to our scale bar here, and we can see here, this is 50 millimeters, 50, millimeters which we must convert to micrometers times by 1000 which gives us a value of 50,000 micrometers 50,000 micrometers so that 50,000 micrometers fits neatly into here now we could use the calculator at this point but of course we simply need to calculate and in this scenario, we have a calculation of 50,000 divided by 20,000, which gives us an actual size of this object. Remember, this is the actual length of a mitochondrion as two micrometers. So two one thousandths of a millimeter, a tiny structure. And as you recall from previous studies, these mitochondria, which are found commonly in animal and plant cells.